welcome to episode 5 of the Dunkel Green podcast. This is a show about knitting, spinning and textile crafts and fiber arts in general. My name is Anna. Today is Friday 21st of April 2017 and I am coming to you from Zurich in Switzerland. In the info box below this video you will find links to my Instagram where I am known as Dunkelgrün, to Ravelry where I am known as Nainiela and also to the Dunkelgrün Ravelry group where you can find information about giveaways, knit-alongs and you can also ask questions about me or about the podcast. Also you will find a link to dunkelgrün.com where you can find show notes for this episode and all other episodes of this podcast. So welcome and thank you very much for tuning in today. It is a pleasure to be back. Uh, it has been a couple of weeks since I last recorded and I would like to apologize to those of you who have been waiting patiently for a new episode to come out. I am really sorry. These last weeks I have been doing many different things but unfortunately not so much knitting and I wanted to wait with recording a new episode until I have some more interesting things to show you and I feel like today this is the case we have a very cool program coming up I am going to show you the, an update on the knitting projects mainly socks that I have been working on and then the rest of the episode, a very big part of this episode, is going to be about the Great Unravel. If you haven't heard about this before, doesn't matter, I will tell you what it is in a second. First we have a reason to celebrate again. Again? <laughs> My YouTube channel has hit a thousand subscribers this week, which is just unbelievable. I don't know how this happened, if I imagine a thousand people they wouldn't even fit into my apartment, not even, not even closely. So it is really overwhelming to think that a thousand people subscribe to this channel to watch these videos that I am filming here in my living room. It, is, it means a lot to me. Thank you very much for your support. And of course I would like to give back something to, as a thank you for you, for you subscribers and viewers of this podcast. And I have dyed some yarn. Um, and I would like to give away one skein of it. So this is the yarn that I would like to give away for the occasion of the 1000 subscribers on YouTube. It is a wonderful bluish white. It looks a little bit like Shibori. I would like to call it Shibori Sunrise because it has also those speckles of sunrise colors in it. So this will be the price. And in order to win this game, you have to check out the Ravelry group. Uh, I have not decided yet what the prompt will be, but head over to the Dunkel Green group and enter for a chance to win this prize. I will let the thread for you open for two weeks. Let's see, I think two weeks is a, is a good amount of time. Last episode I was drawing a number for the winner of the 500 subscriber giveaway and unfortunately the person did not get in touch with me and I was not sure if I should get in touch with her but I feel like I would like the winner to be someone who is watching the podcast because apparently there are many people who are watching the podcast and my thank you is directed towards someone who is one of those many people that are watching the podcast and that's why I decided that I will redraw for the 500 subscriber giveaway and this time I did it off camera and the winner was number 79. Her Ravelry name is Lily Rambeck. Congratulations Lily! Thank you very much for participating and Lily wrote it is my favorite color ever since I was a little girl and it reminds me of both my homes. New Zealand where I have grown up the rolling hills, the bush, native forest, and the greens of the seaweed that wash up on the beach. Also Bavaria, where I was born, and the dense forest that begins at the edge of my Oma's back garden. I used to sit for hours with my face pressed against the glass, watching the squirrels running up and down the trees. 
I also love your podcast because your accent reminds me of my German home and my family there. <laughs> Thank you so much for this beautiful comment, Lily. I think you really deserve to win the prize, which is still here. Sorry, it will be crinkling a bit. It is this green yarn that I have shown you, I think, in episode 3 and 4. So please, Lily, get in touch with me and I will send this to New Zealand. How amazing is that? I have never sent anything to New Zealand before. <laughs> the next uh, thing I would like to talk about is knit -alongs. And I have some very exciting news in this segment. It will be the first time that I am co-hosting a knit along. Yay! It is together with the lovely Celeste from the Yarn to Table podcast. She got in touch with me with a really great idea and of course I wanted immediately to join and be part of that project. The knit along is the Summer Garment Cal and the goal is to knit a garment during summer because usually people think of sweaters and big woolly things for winter, for autumn and during summer we lose a little bit the motivation to knit bigger things or maybe even some of us lose the motivation to knit at all. And so this knit along shall be for all of all those of us who would like to have something to wear during summer. So uh, what you can knit is tops, um, cardigans out of cotton, lacy things, everything that it considers or can be counted as something summery. And also Celeste has put together a really great pattern bundle in her Ravelry group which is so inspiring and I am sure that if you would scroll through that you will be very inspired to join and cast on something summery for yourself or, or even for a friend. And the dates for this knit along are going to be from May 1st to August 31st. So cast on date is May 1st and then you have a lot of time to knit something. And it can also be something, I mean, a summer top with like a, a sleeveless top will not take as much time as, for example, a long sleeve sweater. So it's also very suitable for beginners who have never knit a garment before. The next knit along I would like to talk about and introduce to you, I think many of you heard about it already, and this is the Great Unravel Cal 2017, co-hosted by Taylor of Wool Needles Hands, Caitlin of the Wool Tool podcast, and again Celeste of Yarn to Table podcast. Caitlin, Celeste and Taylor got together to create this really great cal, which is going to kick off tomorrow on April 22nd, which is Earth Day. And the reason why they chose Earth Day for this start is that it is a recycling project, so to say. The goal of this knit along is to go out, search a secondhand sweater, and then unravel it and use the yarn to create something new. You have to use at least 100 grams of recycled yarn and you are not allowed to add any other yarn to your project, so your project has to be 100% recycled and also it needs to be knitting. They are not allowing any crochet or weaving, only in case you try to knit with your yarn and it didn't work out, like it's a weird yarn that is not supposed to, uh, for knitting, then you are allowed to maybe try to do something else, but you have to try knitting first. And I will show you my progress with this curl in in, in this episode I have prepared quite some footage of my preparations of the yarn. But first we are going to talk about finished objects. So I have only one finished object even though it has been four weeks and this was already almost finished last uh, episode and it is a pair of socks. It's these blue socks that I knit out of Alpha Spotlight City Wool, which is a Swiss yarn. I have knit them top down, uh, making a heel flap. And this was my first time making two at a time socks. So I am entering these socks into the new socks cal by Celeste of Yarn to Table. So here they are, and they are a men's size, European size 42. And 
Actually, they are a gift for my former boss, <laughs> but I don't think that he is watching this podcast. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> and next, I would like to show you my work in progress. I have cast on a new pair of socks using Regia. I think all of you say Regia, but in German you would say Regia, actually, so I don't know how I shall say it. But Regia, Regia, I don't know, so it's Regia. Regia Tweet for Ply. And this is how it looks like. It's an amazing yarn, I love it very much. The color is 0090, or probably you could say 90. And it has a lot of specks of uh, blue and red and rust and also a few green specks. So the, con the fiber content of the yarn is 70% wool, 25% polyamide, which is um, nylon, and 5% viscose, which are the tweedy nets in the yarn. And out of this yarn, I am knitting a pair of socks with cables. This is how they look like. It is just a 2 by 2 cable, and I am improvising the pattern. And I have created this really cool heel flap using leftovers of the socks that I just showed you, the blue ones, and a mini skin that I dyed myself. And I used this slip stitch pattern creating like a mosaic color work. I really love this heel flap and it was so much fun to do. And yeah, now I am working on the foot and I really like them. Let me put my hand in to show you the cable pattern a bit better. So here is the cable pattern. The pattern for this I am improvising myself and maybe, maybe, I'm not going to make any promises, maybe I'll be able to write a pattern. After I am done with the pair, I will see. So I have also started the second one already. Here is the second one on different DPNs. These are the carbons and the other ones are the Knit Pro Symphony knitting needles. And for me it looks like I really prefer to knit with the wooden ones than with these. So I'm basically just holding the stitches here on the carbons and then afterwards I will I will probably switch when I keep knitting on, on that other sock. This is it with knitting today. I would now like to show you my progress of the Great Unravel, which has taken quite a lot of time. And I have recently gotten a tripod, so I was able to document my process of the Great Unravel, and I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with that. So the first step was to go into a thrift store and search for a sweater, and I went to something that is called Brockenhaus, which is the Swiss version of second-hand stores and they carry everything from furniture to... Sometimes they have also really trashy things there that no one uh, buys, but yeah, it's really interesting to go there. They are a little bit like a museum. And I went to the biggest one here in Zurich and found two sweaters. One of them is the one that I am wearing. And this one is a very luxurious blend of 55% merino wool, 15% angora, 15% cashmere and 15% silk. It is a Ralph Lauren sweater and when I saw the... I was basically just screening the tags of the sweaters for fiber content because I didn't want to have any acrylic. When I saw that tag, I was like, I want this sweater, I need this sweater. And so I got it out. It was a bit more expensive than the others because it is a Ralph Lauren. I cannot show you the tag now because I'm wearing it. And yeah, then I looked at it and I realized it's the yarn is quite fine. I will probably have troubles knitting with that yarn. And 
then I saw it's size small, so maybe it would even fit me. And yes, it does. Yes, it does. It fits me perfectly. So I got it to keep it as a sweater, and I think it's really cool. And then I searched on for one to buy, to unravel and to use for the project. And I have found a men's cotton sweater, which is gigantic. And so I bought that one for the project. If you're interested to see a video of my bus ride to the uh, Broken House, the thrift store, then stick around for the end of the episode. I am going to incorporate the video that I recorded of my bus ride at the very, very end of the episode. And now I am going to show you how I open the seams of my sweater. So here is my sweater. It's a 100% cotton men's sweater that I found second hand. This is how my seams look like on the wrong side. And this is how they look on the right side. It is a bit similar to a mattress stitch. If you look very closely, you can see those horizontal bars on the right side. And these are the ones that I tried to rip with a seam ripper. So I started unzipping at the sleeve cuff. I was looking for the seaming yarn, which was a very thin thread in the same color as the main knitting yarn. And I am making sure to rip only that very thin thread and not the main knitting yarn. It was a bit hard at the cuff because the thread was woven in in a strange way. Now I managed to unzip the first few stitches at the cuff. Then I just kept going, unzipping those horizontal bars using my seam ripper and pulling apart the pieces to unzip the seam. Now the whole side seam is open, but there is still a little connection where the tag is attached, so I have to remove the tag. It says 100% Baumwolle, which means cotton, of course. I am removing the tag also with my seam ripper. Ta-da! And now it magically opens up. The seams that I just ripped open did not just open the sleeves, but also the connection between the front and the back at one side. Next I want to open this seam connecting the sleeve to the body. Here is the start and I am just going to unzip those horizontal bars of the seam as I did before for the sleeve. When you're working with a seam ripper, always make sure that you're pointing it away from your body in order to avoid any injuries. In this video, sometimes I am not following the safety rule in order to make for a more clear video to show you what I am doing. So please, when you are doing it, point it away from your body and not towards your fingers. So here we have now a close-up where you can very clearly see which which are the stitches that I unzip or that I rip open with the seam ripper? Mm -hmm. 
and here it is very slowly you can see how my ripper grabs those horizontal stitches bars and then I just zip to open them Now I am arriving at the end of this seam connecting the sleeve to the body and yay it is detached. Here I am showing you a close up of how the stitches at the top of the seam look like. It is some kind of a sewn bind off. Now it's time to put the first sleeve aside and move on to the second cuff where I will do exactly the same thing again. In this close-up you can see those horizontal bars on the right side very well. And these are the ones that I'm going to snip now. Then I realized that with a little bit of force I could just unzip the seam by pulling it apart. That was really easy and pleasing to do. Sometimes I had to go back and snip a little bar and then it just went like a zipper. And now the second side seam is open. Next I will detach the second sleeve from the body. And now the second sleeve is detached. The last step will be opening the top seams connecting the front and the back and removing the neck band. Also these seams had those fine horizontal lines of stitches on the right side of the fabric. Unfortunately, I didn't really hold the piece into the camera while I filmed this part. And suddenly, whoop, the seam has just opened like that. And it stopped at this neckline. Next, I started opening the seam on the other side. Now the shoulder seams are open and I just have to remove this neckline from the front and the back pieces. It turned out that the neckline was some kind of folded brim that was folding over the raw edges of the front and the back pieces. Here we can see those raw edges of the front after removing the neckline while the back is still attached to the neckline. When removing the neckline from the back part there was another little challenge and this was the tag. And also here I used my seam ripper to remove those stitches that held the tag to the fabric carefully to not zip the knitted stitches, to not damage the yarn that we want to still use. In the end I got a little impatient so that this last little bit I just cut off using scissors. 
With this step I have finished opening the seams of the sweater and I have freed all the pieces which is a front, a back and two sleeves. After I had opened the seams of the sweater I was ready to dye them and this is what I'm gonna show you in the next clip. Since my sweater is out of 100% cotton, it can't be dyed with acid dyes, which we usually would use for dyeing wool. The dyes that I have used are these Deca dyes, which are batik uh, dyes that are specifically made for dyeing cotton. While my sweater piece is soaking in some laundry detergent, I am getting ready to prepare my kitchen for dyeing. For this I remove all the items that I usually use for food preparation and cover the surface with some newspaper and paper towels. Apart from a dye pot for dyeing we need our dyes, some common salt, some hot water to dissolve the dye and some tools such as spoons and plastic cups. While I dye, you will see me wearing some old clothes, nitrile gloves. For handling the dye powders, you should be wearing a dust mask or a respirator equipped with a particle filter in order to avoid breathing in the dust. Another trick to protect yourself from the dye powder flying around is to dampen those paper towels because then all the dust particles are going to stick to it instead of flying around in the air. For any kind of spills or emergencies I like to keep an old towel at the side. So finally we are ready to start. First I dissolve a tablespoon of salt in the water and start warming the pot. Then I prepare some dye solution in a plastic cup by adding a bit of dye powder to hot water. Next I pour my colors into the pot. Here I have mixed a blue and a green color. Then it's time to grab the sweater piece that I want to dye. In order to achieve a gradient, I dip the bottom part of the piece into the dye pot and then I quickly pull it out again. And I do this over and over. Slowly starting to dip more and more of the piece into the dye. Since the dye is starting to stick to the fabric, there is less and less dye in the water over time and the top parts that I put into the water later will receive a lighter color. And this is how I achieve the gradient. This big piece of wet fabric gets quite heavy over time, so if you need to rest your arms, be sure to keep a pot nearby where you can put down the piece of fabric like I do here. I decided to add a bit more dye 
directly from the powder. In order to achieve a full shade of this dye, it is necessary to let it simmer for about 30 minutes. I did this by constantly dipping the fabric in and out of the pot in order to avoid sharp transitions. So here is my finished piece, still wet and steaming hot but you can see that it has turned into a beautiful gradient from green to grey. The only thing left to do now is giving the piece a good wash and then letting it dry. So now that the piece was dyed and dry, I was ready to open and unravel the sweater piece. It is actually, it was the back piece, I think I didn't mention that in the clip. I am sorry that the clip was maybe a little bit short and not as detailed, but it took me a really long time to fiddle out the yarn out of the fabric. And unfortunately my camera ran out of battery and I didn't notice that it happened and then it turn dark because it was already late because I think I was doing that for three hours or so without stop when I'm focusing on something then sometimes I can be really in in that thing and not notice anything else like that the camera had not been recording for half an hour so here is the clip At the edge of the ribbing I could find this thread that must be a different material than cotton since it didn't take the dye. So I decided to start unraveling at this place by removing this thread. Now that undyed thread is removed and I am starting to unravel the knitting. Every time I got to the end of a row I couldn't keep unraveling because my yarn got stuck there. It was a bit like trying to open a crochet chain from the wrong side, so I realized there must be something wrong with opening this piece from this side. So I decided to stop at this end and try to unravel the piece starting from the top. After fiddling around a bit with that, I had created a terrible mess. As there was some shaping for the neckline and I couldn't tell if the piece was cut at this place, I couldn't really find a yarn to start unraveling. And this is why I decided to just cut off that messy part at the top.
after cutting it off, I had to fiddle around a little bit more. Until I finally got to a point where I had removed all the cut scraps and could unravel smoothly. So after this unraveling, I uh, got out the yarn and I have four balls of yarn now. A bit, three smaller ones and one bigger one that are still in, those, in this gradient. And this yarn is a little strange. I don't know if I can show it to you here in the, in the video, maybe like this. So the yarn in this sweater is a little strange. You can see that it is consisting of several plies, but they are not really twisted, they are just running parallel. And the whole yarn is like that. And I counted, it's actually eight plies, eight very thin plies. And in total then the yarn is about decay weight. But yeah, I am going to try to knit with it. I don't know how much fun it will be, because it's also not so easy to tell at some point if you're still having all the eight plies, or if it's maybe just seven because one broke or so. And this, this is, shall be determined. So. What I will cast on, I don't know yet, because even though tomorrow is the cast on date for the, for the Great Unravel, my plan is to make a summer top out of this. And of course I want to double dip that into our summer garment cal. And as the cast on date for the summer garment cal is only May 1st, I'm going to hold off with casting on for this project until May 1st. Last but not least, I would like to mention some podcasters that I have enjoyed, as I usually do. Unfortunately, also these weeks I have not been watching a lot of podcasts. I, I don't know what I have been doing, but I have not been watching podcasts so much as before. And anyway, I have two that I would like to share. It is the Lauren Pugh Designs podcast. It's uh, Lauren who lives in Cyprus and she is a, a crochet designer and she has just a very awesome sense of aesthetics. Everything is very autumnal, she loves um, muted colors just like me and also she is sharing beautiful pictures and stories of her life in Cyprus which is just an amazing place. And her crochet work is just beautiful, she designs beautiful uh, wing shaped shawls out of gradient self self gradienting yarn so to say it's just inspiring go and check her out and the other one i would like to recommend is a youtube channel called christy glass knits i am sure many of you know her because she does so much work in the knitting community she prepares interviews and uh, stories in in the world of knitting that are really precious and valuable 
um, but just in case you haven't heard of her, and also because I think I don't, I don't hear many podcasters recommending her, she is really someone that you should watch and support because she does great work for the knitting community and I think she is both very funny and quirky in a way so that it's really entertaining to watch her but also she makes conversations that are really thoughtful and deep and meaningful. I think this is, this is really a great job to combine these two sides into one show and also her videos are usually not so long so it's more easy to incorporate to your schedule. Alright guys, thank you very much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the footage of this uh, episode and go over to the Ravelry group, check out the giveaway and if you have any questions also go over to the Ravelry group and ask away as you wish and I will try to answer your questions. So, happy knitting and have a good week or a couple of weeks and see you next time. Bye!